And hello everybody, welcome to another Poker Beasts mini video. And probably the first one in, I'm just going to quickly check. Dang, the last one was in May, Cryofactor Spellia, which you can see up here in the eye icon. Of course, not too much to say, I'm just trying to get a lot of videos done this year, including quite a few mini videos, which I'm going to try and upload on a weekly basis. I'm not going to like say it's going to be one for each week throughout the year, but when they're done, I'll try and get them out weekly, like on every Friday. Sorry, I'll shut up. Let's start the video, shall we? I'm unsure of the actual pronunciation of this genus, so I'll just refer to the subject for this video as the giant Chinese elk. The giant Chinese elk, as the name suggests, were elk that stood at 1.5 meters tall, with antlers being 1.6 meters in total. Yes, that's actually quite a crown. There are a few species of... Okay, I'll try to say it. Cynomegaceros, which some lived in Japan. S. Pachyosteus and S. Ordocyanus. Shut up were named by a legendary Chinese paleontologist, C.C. Yong, in 1932. The animal would have lived in forested areas in northern China, likely grazing on both ground and low-hanging vegetation. Not a ton I can say for this animal, but I hope I covered a decent amount of information for this segment. To be honest, I was surprised how amazing this deer looks. Is there a difference between a deer and an elk? Or are they just named for the same thing? I don't know. I mean, look at those antlers! Some might want to hang this animal's head on a wall, but I would like to leave it be if I found it alive today. Besides, it would be more likely that I would keep it as a skull instead, since that's really all you can find for this wonderful deer. Anyway, let's see what this giant Chinese elk or deer would look like as a Pokemon. The small Felks are quite energetic, but are able to stay still if they feel a predator is nearby. They sleep with their heads tucked into their bushy tails. Uh. Oh my gosh, this guy is so cute! To be honest, I named this Pokemon Felks as I first thought this was a fox due to its bushy tail and large ears. But nope, it's a fawn or baby deer. Or some people might just call it a Bambi. But now the official um, what term is fawn. I love the thick bushy coat and the tail was certainly a creative choice. For stats, Felks has it best with its speed and special attack, but it's pretty fail otherwise. To help its fealty, we have the abilities Fluffy for bulk and Snow Cloak for evasion. Obviously, Felks is better suited to evade predators instead of fighting them. So let's see what this little Pokemon evolves into. Your elk have thick woolly fur to help them stay warm, but still rely on forest cover to live in small dens they dig out or find. They can be quite temperamental and play rough, often getting themselves in dangerous situations. This is Yon Elk. You can see the bridge this Pokemon makes from Felks and Yon Elk's evolution, retaining the fluffy side of Felks but with a more mature look. That is not fully mature yet. For stats, Yon Elk are quite fast with good stat spread overall. For his abilities, instead of fluffy, we have the more offensive Slush Rush, but we still keep Snow Cloak, which both rely on hail. Not much to say, let's just um, see what it evolves into. Sientelk Sandlers have properties similar to ice, except they won't melt until it's at boiling temperature. This makes poaching for their icy accessories difficult, especially as they can cause frostbite on contact. Like other deer Pokemon, Sientelk use these Atlas to fight for dominance or for mates. This is Sientelk! Okay, first things first, I appreciate the Atlas of the giant Chinese elk being in this design. Also, this design is very simple yet unique as a species of Pokemon, with its bright coloration of light blue and white. <laughs> For stats, Yentelk has well-rounded stats with most emphasis on speed and offense. For its abilities, they remain unchanged but will be useful in a hail team. 
For moves, Sientelk learns quite a bit, with great coverage against fire, steel and rock types, which would be its common weaknesses. In case it can be outsped, there's quick attack and bullet punch for priority. The clear weakness Sientelk and its family have is against fighting types such as Lucario and Medicham. However, anything with greater speed and power can easily counter these Pokemon. Furthermore, bulky steel types such as Ferrothorn and Agron would be able to take Sientelk's hits if it doesn't have a fighting type move. As I said, Sientelk would be best on a hail themed team, setting up hail with a bulky ice type such as Lapras or using Snow Warning alone Nine Tails, then switching into this Pokemon to set up with Sword Stance and dealing some damage. I'd like to thank Agent Kaj for once again doing their designs for this video, and I very much appreciate doing a two stage evolution or doing three different Pokemon designs, is that right? Anyway, with the shinies they also made, thank you very much. Falx is more darker compared to its regular form with charcoal black as its primary colour, while Yonelk and Sienelk having the same colour but only under their thick ash grey fur. However, their antlers and other icy features do remain the same. If you want to check this artist out, you'll find their socials in the description below, but you can also see them on screen. And here we are now at the end of the video. Literally nothing much, <laughs> it's not really time to say really. Just a big thank you to Agent Cadge once again, and also the other artists who let me use their um, artwork as cutaways for this video. It really helps, and also I do love to show some of the gorgeous paleo artwork out there. Just Oh, and this animal is gorgeous enough as it is, so to have an artistic video, not artistic video, artistic vision behind it, mwah, just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, so I am working on so many videos right now. So, I hope you are tuned for that, because it's going to be quite a busy year for me, and it's going to be quite busy on your timeline. So, if you want to support this channel, then please check out my Patreon. Like you see here, you get your name featured at the end of it, and yeah. Minimum cost is $1 or £1, or whatever. And if you want to check out my other socials, then please do. I do want to post my art there and that more often, but I just couldn't be bothered or have the time to do it, because I'm just so focused on the videos themselves. Don't forget to click that thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe. Bloody, how many times do people hear that? I mean, to be fair though, it does help apparently. And also, it's sort of, you know, like, please check out my other content, it would really help. And don't just like, skim through it, please just watch it all the way through, because that really does help. Big peace to those who do. Oh, and of course, to be notified by any future videos in the future, including what I was talking about earlier, then don't forget to kick little bronze on. And yes, thank you so much for watching. And if you can hear the clock, I do apologize, but I just can't be to port. In the past, present, or even future, I will see you there. Bye!